Happy Friday, everyone. I'm Nick Slavic. I'm the proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company. I'm also the host of a weekly program called Ask a Painter Live uh, on Facebook Live, where uh, I usually present a topic. You guys send in your questions. I answer them live, painting, restoration, wood finishing, furniture projects, decorative finishes, wallpaper, whatever you need. Uh, but today, there is a larger purpose uh, for the PDCA, the Painting and Decorating Contractors of America. Uh, I am doing live in the field training and the topic that was given to me for this month, uh, this week, was uh, tools in the truck. So today I'm going to walk you through my truck, uh, my philosophy of why I use certain things, uh, and I'm going to run you through all my tools. Um, basically uh, I run a crew of anywhere, uh, depending on the time of the year, between maybe two and, uh, and five or six men. Um, I set up uh, my vehicles so that uh, we are completely mobile. Uh, we keep a light footprint, and I want to be uh, self-contained, and I want to have everything we can have, uh, including men, food, tools, equipment, ladders, uh, so we don't have to leave the job site and we're a self-contained unit. Uh, I find that most painters seem to be uh, tool fetishists. Uh, they also, you know, if, uh, if, if regular painters seem to be, you know, the United States Army, I seem to be like a special forces unit. I try to keep a, uh, a uh, light footprint. I try to keep uh, light on my feet, uh, move quickly, uh, and, and, and not carry anything that I don't have to. A lot of guys have big vans, trailers, uh, huge trucks, uh, multiple trucks, things like this. I find that a lot of the times most guys carry way too much stuff. So, uh, starting with the truck here, uh, this is one of two of my work trucks. I have two Dodge Rams, half tons with the uh, extended cab here. Uh, I can fit uh, four, four of my crew members and me in there uh, with a job. Full ladder, full complemental ladders, uh, snug topper, uh, rhino racks on the top. Uh, I found that of all the commercially available ones, not only do these sort of look the best, they also actually function the best. I can stack three ladders high on both sides and there's enough room in the middle to stack another uh, two ladders in the middle there all corded together. They got a really cool system here too where um, there's a metal, uh, a metal hook up there where that ladders actually hook on. Uh, by the specs of the product, they actually want them to come up and come over and hug the ladders that way. But in all my trucks, I found that facing them towards the front, you could actually lock your ladders in. And then in back, they have a simple latch. You go along there. So if you don't have a lot of ladders, it's real quick. You just pop it up there, slide it up, hit dodge, clip it on, and you're good to go. Um, so basically, you know, this one truck uh, and all the ladders and all the gear you can put in back will support anywhere between about five and six men. Um, in the back, um, I have the truck completely undone now, but I normally have four foot, five foot, six foot step ladder. Right here. Uh, all my totes, which I'll, I'll go through here in a second, uh, they all get uh, boxed up and they all get stacked in the back. And then I have, you know, a complement of probably uh, 25 to 30 drop cloths, ranging from the big sheets uh, to the runners, things like that. That'll normally, uh, the crew has, you know, most of the rest of the gear today, so. Uh, that's why we're missing some things. But I carry enough canvas to basically drop cloth three sides of a house so we can stay mobile there. Uh, that will all fit back here easily uh, along with the paint for the day on the job. So uh, first of all, the most important thing for me is all my hand tools. Um, I try to keep tools uh, that are effective, that are multi-use, and uh, that are not very expensive because when I have uh, the full complement of guys with me, tools disappear. And if you start buying very fancy tools, very expensive, uh, finely crafted tools, they're going to be gone anyway. So, um, the, the two main tools for me are always painter's tool and cleaning brush. Every one of my guys all day has to carry one of these around with them. This will take care of almost any little task that you come across uh, throughout the day here. A couple small hammers. As painters, basically you, you tap in a, a, an odd nail, you pull out a nail out of the material wall, you really don't need uh, anything that fancy. A um, couple stainless steel putty knives for patching. Allen wrenches for all those little bathroom fixtures, uh, set screws, things like that. I carry around my miscellaneous container of uh, uh, some screws, uh, switch plate screws, uh, wire nuts, uh, things like that. Because when you're working with the guys, you you know you take all the lights off the outside of a house. Sometimes you lose a wire nut. You, you're down a switch plate screw. Some extras there. Pliers, um, belt hook. Uh, when I'm when I'm prepping the uh, inside of a house, I carry around a, pul a pouch like this. Put my tools in there, clip it on there, have another one here, so I hook my uh, tape here, and I have all my tools at the ready when I'm uh, masking off interior wheel work. Uh, simple set of screwdrivers, you really don't need anything more. Uh, three or four Phillips, three or four 
regular with one multi in case you're going up high on a ladder, you don't know what you need, you got a couple in there. Uh, simple wrench, a couple pencils for marking shutters, marking door hardware, uh, other things like that. Utility knives, uh, replaceable blade knives, and then uh, drill bits like this. Uh, I don't spend a lot of money on drill bits only because I go through about one of these every year with the crew sort of just tossing them into the bushes and, and losing them or taking them home for their friends. Uh, besides the ladders, uh, besides the totes, besides the drop quads, I carry around two five gallon buckets, a couple lids for those, and a bunch of empty single paint cans so we can blend paint and then if we only get a five then we have some uh, extra cans we can cut out of. Um, we can go take a look at the totes here. I basically, uh, here in Minnesota, we organize our year into two six months chunks. Six months inside, six months outside, and I have separate sets of gear for each of those. So, the first set of totes I'm gonna go over is my exterior uh, stuff. Number one being um, my brush tote here. Uh, we are in transition right now. In the, in the next week or two, I will be completely transitioning from exterior to interior. So normally, I have three rows of you know my three inch wall brushes there. Uh, some deck staining brushes and then I usually have three or four rows of uh, you know I have some miscellaneous brushes here some angled some nylock some uh, trim brushes uh, and then I carry my standard sort of interior exterior trim and, and cutting brushes a whole complement of those things here um, super organized here the bristles uh, when uh, when I wash them out I set them back in here they dry bristles stay good and you can always tell what you have what you need and uh, when you take this around, there's really nothing, no other brushes you'll need if you got something like this. Next tote here would be my uh, tape and plastic tote. I carry uh, tan tape, I carry blue tape, uh, and I carry all sorts of, you know, the 3M standard plastic in the three sizes, four, six, and nine, uh, with a whole bunch of hand maskers for the crew here. Uh, again, light and mobile. Uh, I try not to buy uh, in bulk too often. I wait for, you know, the blue bucket sales and other things. I stock up a little, but, you know, just like all other businesses, you don't want to carry a lot of inventory, you don't want to have a lot of overhead. So I kind of practice just-in-time inventory with that sort of thing. I just replenish it as I need it. Um, next tote would be my liquid uh, box. In early spring, late fall, uh, in Minnesota, the temperatures do drop down far enough uh, where we sometimes get a freeze. I keep all my liquids, all my perishables for the outside in one of these. So if we are going to have a freeze at night, I will take this inside my shop or inside my house like that so we can keep it all set up. Basically, nothing too surprising in here. A little bit of extender for the outside paint, a little bit of paint thinner, uh, a couple cans of, uh, you know, some uh, shellac based stain killer, wasp spray, sunscreen, bug spray, soap, a um, little bit of Lexel when I do have to uh, put screws into people's roofs to make a, a, a safety uh, requirement or something like that so we can climb up there. I, I seal it up here with that. Uh, we have a little bit of wood filler, measuring cup for the extender, paddle mixer, scrub brush, and uh, some sandwich bags. When we take off hardware or miscellaneous house numbers, things like that, we bag them up and, and tape them uh, to the house like that. Uh, next tote would be my what I call the ladder tote. Um, we basically have you know all the little clamps that you would need to hold drop clouds on windy days. Uh, I have uh, a whole bunch of these little brackets, uh, two by fours made up. If we need to screw something into a roof for uh, footholds or ladder holds, we have those. Uh, we have the brackets for the uh, black wedges, uh, the step boxes. And I have a bunch of uh, uh, ladder bracket or roof brackets as well, so I can safely get up on those roofs. Uh, in addition to that, I always throw in my uh, collapsible um, collapsible brace for the ladder too. It's always nice to have one of those, especially for taping outside of windows and uh, these are my favorite the the roof hooks I carry a couple of these around these are probably the biggest safety item that I that I use you hook them on the top of an extension ladder you, you, the wheel lets you push it up the roof without damaging the shingles and then you flip the ladder over and it hooks on the roof and that gives you kind of safe passage for dormers and things like that um, for that purpose uh, I actually bought a bunch of old kind of junk extension ladders 20 uh, excuse me 40 footers and 32s and I take them apart so you have a single section of ladder to work with something like this. Makes it light and uh, one of the biggest safety things I do is that single, you know, I took apart a 40, so I have one 20 foot section of ladder, you hook this on there, you can kind of climb up and down all the rooms you need to. Uh, this is the safety tote here. Um, again, try to keep it light and simple. Uh, Non-skid drop quads. Uh, yesterday we were up on a tin roof on a, on a horse barn and just enough angle where you could stand on one of these. Knee pads, 
hearing protection when we power wash or we spray, respirators for the whole crew, uh, safety glasses. Um, this is the uh, climbing rope I use for my for my fall tech uh, gear here, my fall arresting harness. It's basically just a rock climbing suit. It's got a yellow cord on the back, uh, so and it's got some give to it. So if you were to fall, it doesn't bungee or snap you. It'll basically just soften your your fall like that. So that's another um, one of my favorite pieces of safety equipment there. Uh, with that, I have a couple uh, I have a couple roof brackets down on the bottom of this thing. But basically, you just uh, screw your uh, safety gears, your your carabiners and things to the ridge line of the roof. And then attach your climbing rope and that to it. Um, roller, split down the middle. You put this on the top rung of the ladder if you need to set it on millwork in a house or if you need to put it on a corner. Uh, this goes around that top uh, rung and it'll actually grip the house a little better than if you're trying to rest it on an outside corner or something like that. Um, nothing else too groundbreaking there. You know, we carry a little uh, uh, throwaway ear protection here. have the brush extender if there's just an odd place you can't reach you put that on the painter's pole uh, next tote pretty simple we just have all our cords wound up here I try to keep those in the, the best order you can keeps them a little better next tote is our uh, caulking uh, tote here uh, normally this is stocked with you know three colors of, of caulk uh, you know six caulking guns give or take uh, like I said we're at the end of the exterior year so I'm trying to wind down the inventory of that stuff so we just got a few tubes left for this year uh, and then Sander scrapers drills. So we keep a whole bunch of uh, uh, sanding blocks here, uh, especially when we're sanding the outsides of houses. A lot of times uh, the random orbital sanders are, are good, but uh, getting rid of the fur when you wash a house is, is pretty good by hand. And nothing different there. We got a couple mouse sanders, a couple DeWalt drills, full complement of scrapers, wire brushes, sanding pads, things like that. Uh, I carry around the collapsible leaf blower as well in there for uh, when we when we sand decks off, we blow them off to get all that residual dust off there. Um, besides that, for exterior stuff, uh, that's about it. I can run you through the interior coats here now too. Um, I have, like I said, maybe 25, 30 pieces of canvas for outside. I have a completely set, uh, completely different set of canvas for inside. They're all clean. I never use them outside. Uh, so when I make the transition, I'll take all my exterior cloths down to the laundromat. We'll get them laundered up, folded up, stocked away for the year, and then we'll bring out all the interior stuff. Uh, and like I said, in the winter, every night I got to bring in all my uh, perishable stuff. So I have one tote with just perishable items or things that I consider perishable, along with the paint for the next day. So you know, standard couple buckets of mud. I, I only carry around one hand masker. Uh, when we do ceilings, we mask off all the doors and windows. We don't really have a need for a whole bunch in there. Um, blue tape, green tape, I like both. Uh, blue tape's a little cheaper, so we use it for the plasticking, but uh, you know, uh, the frog tape does a really good job for the, for the woodwork. And then same thing, carry around a couple random cans of primer. Um, got some texture, you never know where you're gonna need some of that stuff. A um, couple little bits of, uh, you know, things to help you with a wall patch if you show up. And like most of you guys, you've probably shown up to a job and the homeowner will say, I forgot to tell you about that doorknob that went through the wall, and uh, it's a very long patching process. So I carry these just in case. That'll save me a trip sometimes. Um, sort of a random box of interior stuff. Uh, hair dryer for drying patches. Heat gun for drying patches. Uh, again, we have the Ziploc bags. Uh, those are for, you know, uh, door hardware, uh, miscellaneous switch plates, things like that. Everybody always asks us to dust their chandeliers in the entryways of these uh, multi-level foyers, so we always carry around a duster to get that stuff. Um, smaller, a little more compact drill. Um, I use uh, lime chalk actually to tint all my mud. Uh, in, its, in its stock form, you know, the mud is white, and a lot of times on a white wall you can't see where you've been, so I, I put a little bit of blue in there uh, just so we can see where our patches are. Uh, word of warning though, a drywaller uh, had warned me against using uh, there's only a couple colors that won't bleed through paint, so uh, don't use red for sure. Uh, I've seen that in action where that actually bled through paint. Blue is safe, right? I tend to use that stuff. Tons of furniture moving pads. Another non-stick drop cloth here. Uh, and then a couple of prep tools here. You know, I carry around the I carry around my triangle duster my sander too. You never know when you're going to have to make up for another painter's sort of uh, uh, lots of uh, fiber from, uh, from an old roller cover, a cheap roller cover on a wall. 
Same thing here too, continuing with the interior stuff. We got our, our complement of uh, knee pads, a couple smaller poles that'll fit in here. I got the rest of uh, three or four different sizes of the poles in the truck. Um, we have a, a couple work lights and a couple cords. That's really all you need. Um, most of the time with, with me and the guys, we try to get anywhere between uh, three very complicated rooms a day or six sort of standard bedrooms or bathrooms um, done in a day. And really you don't need many more tools, uh, lights, things like that. Uh, we use our lights mainly for patching uh, and in bathrooms when you take the vanity light off. And then, because we're in transition, I don't have this uh, fully stocked yet, but then I carry around usually two totes just full of rollers, roller handles, pans, things like that, so we're always fully stocked. Uh, at least four good fans come with us every day, and uh, that's about it. Um, right about now, like I was mentioning, is our transition, so the, the tape and plastic tote will probably end up coming with the interior stuff. We'll take a little bit of the knee pads out of there, maybe a drill charger, and like I said, we try to keep a light footprint because when we show up at somebody's house, especially for interior painting, I don't want to bring too much stuff into their house. So we basically have this plus maybe one or two more totes. Every guy grabs two totes, a couple canvases and a ladder. We come in, we set up a nice work area, and we keep a light footprint. Everything you need, uh, besides uh, my spray equipment, which I keep in the shop, everything else that you need for the 150 jobs I do a year, inside, outside, uh, historic restoration, interior stuff, Everything is here. There's not a lot of specialized tools. I try to keep it simple. And over the years, I've kind of weeded it down. If I carried something around for a year or two and I just really didn't use it, it goes in the shop or gets thrown away. So basically at its core, you know, almost every interior job I'll do this winter is this plus about one tote. So, um, and like I mentioned at the start, I, uh, I also host a weekly show called Ask a Painter. And you guys can now ask me any questions about uh, my work vehicles, my tools, my totes, my processes. Also, anything you guys want to talk about. You want to talk about entrepreneurship. You want to talk about my apprenticeship program, uh, marketing, employees, you know, whatever else you want to. So I will take this and turn it around. Thanks to my lovely wife <laughs> for filming today. And I'm going to scroll through your questions. Okay, so the feed is going sideways here, but the questions are coming in the other way. Uh, any failures over the years that lead to your discoveries of the best organization practice? I think um, the biggest, uh, I don't know if they're real failures, but I think, you know, like I mentioned, you see everybody else carry around these huge cargo vans and these trailers and this other stuff and you think well you know I should probably get a whole bunch of that stuff and I found over the years that having half ton pickup trucks um, you know it, I, we have on the weekends if we want to throw the canoe in and all the bikes and all the other stuff we can fit my me and my wife and our four kids in this pickup truck with a full complement of stuff here so you know so you're not this vehicle does multi-use for me. You know, it's it's a family vehicle, but it's you know 96% a, a painting vehicle, uh, but family when we need it. So it's one of those sort of things where, you know, I would rather spend the money on a on a vehicle like this and, and get multi-use for it, and uh, you know, still have some use for for a family vehicle. So we don't have to then buy another vehicle and insure it and things like that. So, um, oh, the only other piece of gear that I don't have with me now is uh, in the winter. You know, I used to carry around a bunch of you know. 24 foot extension ladders, 20 foot, 16 foot extension ladders in the winter, and up here they get caked with ice and snow, and they'd be cold. You'd bring them into the foyer of a of a house, and you know it, the water would start condensating on the outside of the ladder and drip down. It's just kind of a mess. I actually use one of those collapsible uh, extension ladders now, and I bought the longest one they have. And now I throw that sucker in the back here, and I have not. Uh, I have not needed any of my other extension ladders for about three years now inside houses. Even on those big foyers, there's always a way to work around it. So that's been nice. And again, you know, if, if, if most guys consider themselves a large standing army with tons of gear, tons of people, tons of this, I consider myself sort of the light, uh, knowledgeable, you know, special forces unit where we're, we try to do the most we can with as little uh, things that we actually have. So go through here. And I apologize, guys. The questions are coming in sideways. Which trick is the most useful? Um, you know, basically, I'm trying to think here. You know, 
every everything that I've uh, made big improvements on or little tricks that I've done are basically all prep over the last bunch of years. You know, I've been doing this over two decades now, so you know, the first five or six or seven years is always sort of the, you get the painting process down, you understand paint, you understand the basic process, and then you sort of just trying to improve on that. And every year I lay out a guideline for myself. I wanna make one huge leap of, of improvement in exterior painting and one huge leap of improvement in interior painting. And over the last five or six years, every time it's all been prep. Either the washing, the sanding, the plasticking off stuff, uh, just more prep, better prep, more effective prep, things like that. And having, you know, even as something even as simple, you know, like I showed in the interior totes, just carrying around that, that radius sander, that 360 sander, it's always nice to just have it. Even if some wall looks a little bit odd, you can just get up there, you can sand it nice, get it smooth. And, you know, my, my goal every year uh, is to never, ever get a call back. Now, as a goal, that's sort of just my baseline. That's, that's the main hurdle to get over. But really, my, my, my larger goal uh, during the year is not only to not get a call back, but to have almost every one of my customers be an advocate for me. They like my work so much that they'll actually go out and proselytize for me and, uh, and spread the word about it. So uh, the basic hurdle is to not get called back. And that's sort of one of those things where, especially, you know, I'm 45 minutes south of the metro here. Uh, most contractors in, in my hometown, New Prague here, we sort of skew our, our market north a little bit. Uh, that's where the larger group of people is. So having, I could be traveling, you know, 45 minutes to an hour away every day and having, being a self-contained, self-moving, uh, efficient unit like that, having everything you need in this truck to fix just about any interior or exterior job is really, really helpful. So just, just staying light on your feet, only carrying what you need, um, and especially when you got a bunch of young guys on your crew, those painters tools and stuff get tossed into the weeds <laughs> and things like that. So, Christian Militello, take them off your truck in the winter time. Yeah, if, if you're talking about the extension ladders, I don't even carry them around anymore. Like I said, I think I got that blue uh, collapsible extension ladder that they sell at almost every hardware store and uh, and supply store, and that thing's been a godsend. That was a huge um, that was a huge uh, improvement in in my philosophy of sorting light on your feet and, and being able to do that. And really, you know, when you take your standard uh, foyer, your two level foyer with kind of the kink stairwell and the big chandelier in the middle. You know, on those three walls that you have to do, you really only have to do about four or five moves on that ladder. So, you know, you don't need a, a class one industrial heavy duty ladder that'll support 300 pounds. What you need is something, you pop it up there, you get up, you do your four quick moves. I got my apprentice behind me rolling. You take it down, you're done. Really, time on the ladder, maybe 20 to 25 minutes a, a day when you do a foyer like that. So really, you don't need something super heavy duty. And I found that's a perfect trick uh, with something like that. Do you keep an, uh, Chris asked, do you keep an inventory list so you know what's missing, uh, needs to be replaced? No, I don't keep an inventory list because uh, uh, I'm on the job site every day. So basically, if we run out of green tape during the day, that night when I go get paint for the next day, I just go get, go get more of that stuff. Um, and like I said, uh, the inventory list is super simple. <laughs> uh, for, well, I'll just take uh, interior stuff, for example. I carry one tube of caulk, usually, uh, a white, in case we have to fill some gaps in woodwork. You know, uh, when I'm doing a woodwork job, obviously, you know, I, I bulk up, I take a whole bunch of that stuff and do that. But what I plan for is the uh, is the times where <laughs> you get an hour away and the homeowner says, you know what, since you're here, could you just paint this woodwork in my bathroom, the baseboards? And, you know, of course, the painter before or the homeowner before would not have filled any holes or caulked any cracks. And at that time, you can either stop, you can go, you know, for half an hour, 45 minutes, you can go grab a tube of caulk. You can come back to the job site and do it, or you can just have that one tube. Uh, it's super simple in the winter. Um, green tape, blue tape, plastic, and mud. Beyond that, everything is a durable good, and it's all in the totes. Um, I wash out all my own uh, roller covers and brushes, uh, things like that. So I, I, I keep totes uh, in my shop where I wash out my brushes. I keep a bunch of totes there, so as things get clean and dry, I restock those totes. And, and the normal process of sort of bringing my primers and paints out to the truck every day, I'll bring those totes of brushes and things like that. And I always carry more than I need as a principle because, <laughs> you, 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 again, you don't want to be 45 minutes away and need a roller handle, a brush, a roller cover, and a pan. You know, it's a super expensive unit, and it, it's a ton of time wasting, especially when you're away there. So. 
Yeah, so basically, I mean, I, I again, I try to keep it simple. Uh, sometimes in the winter, I'll even carry just nine foot plastic. Uh, when I do, um, uh, it is the more expensive plastic, but I would much rather carry only one roll of it and sort of have, you know, that be a universal plastic, maybe cut off and waste a little, but honestly, um, you know, non-durable goods, uh, things that are be able to used up, mud, tape, plastic, and you know the little bit of stain killer that I use here and there, and it's uh, it's easy to just kind of keep keep reference there. But like I said, easy to keep track of that stuff when I'm on the job site every day with the boys and, and doing that stuff. So let's see some more here. Commercial versus residential versus restoration. Do they require any type of reorganization? specific projects like uh, uh, the project that the crew is finishing up today on this beautiful Friday in Minnesota uh, there is a steel pole barn that uh, horses are located in there is a block automotive shop and there is a standard Masonite residential house so in an, in an instance like that that sort of takes a little bit of everything we got our big Wooster green uh, roller buckets for the block uh, I like to I like to roll those block walls to really push that paint in there the steel shed I, I sprayed and then the house will all brush. So it's kind of a perfect example of, you know, for anybody who's seen me talk for more than three minutes, knows that I'm sort of a, I consider myself a decorator in the 1800 sense, where I try to be proficient in a little bit of everything, sort of a generalist, as most people would call it. So I try to stay proficient in spraying, uh, rolling stuff, uh, hand brushing, all this other stuff. Really, uh, when I get to a job like that, we still have all our standard gear. That day, I just throw in the 440, uh, the sprayer with me, and honestly, that's all you need. I mean, there's a whole bunch. We already have our safety gear. We have our ladders. We have this other stuff. Uh, besides a sprayer, uh, I keep an extra set of you know spraying shoes and things like that, and a, and a hat and things like that, just so I can keep myself clear of all the overspray. But honestly, again, my philosophy of light on your feet. Um, you know, for the uh, you know maybe 20 times I spray a year on certain things like that. I'm in my shop every day. Uh, instead of just bringing out the, the paint and stuff, I'll also bring throw the sprayer in. And, and for that reason too, even, even my philosophy on sort of sprayers, just light, small, accurate, well-maintained things. I don't need any of those big stand-up machines with wheels and things like that. I don't do enough spraying for that. I've had a 440 for about 10 years now, and uh, basically with good maintenance, I've done you know industrial stuff, commercial stuff, you know, I've sprayed uh, 190 gallons of, uh, of elastomerics uh, through this and that. I've done dry fall, and the thing's just been a, works like a top. Um, the only time I differ from this, I in my finishing shop, I actually have a couple dedicated sprayers, uh, one for oils, uh, one for sort of, you know, top coats, water-based top coats and hybrids, uh, and then I have two HVLPs. Now, I've only bought uh, one of those, uh, my 440. The rest of them... Old painters getting out of the business will either give them to you or, you know, for 10 or 20 bucks, they'll give you a well-maintained, you know, 330 from 20 years ago or a, or a Wagner cap spray from years ago. So basically, I never seek out the extra stuff, but when something like that lands on your doorstep, you know, you'd be kind of foolish not to do it. So check the comments here. Uh, commercial, residential, and restoration. No, you know, the only time where we have to, um, sometimes when the when the crew swells in the summer to maybe five or six guys, uh, I do have another identical truck set up to this. Uh, and then uh, I'll let the crew actually spread out a little bit. Or when I know we're going to be splitting jobs, which I usually try not to do, and we need a whole bunch of ladders, you know, we'll take the full complement of, you know, a couple 40-footers, a couple 32s, couple 28s, couple 20s, couple 24s, 16s, and that. And then at that time, we will take both trucks. So, you know, if we have a barn to do, if we have a super cool old Victorian restoration to do or something like that, we'll take a bunch of that extra stuff like that. But really, you know, minus the safety gear, uh, the, uh, the the lead requirement, the lead requirement, uh, RRP stuff, once in a while in those old houses, that's about it. Lettering on your truck. How often do you wash the exterior of your truck? Oh yeah, clean versus dirty truck. This is huge. Um, the last time I did a live in the field training, I actually conducted a live estimate with somebody. And this guy here, uh, my, my truck, is, is very important to me when you show up. Uh, we all know that painters are, are sort of on the lower end of the trades. You know, most people group us in there with roofers, uh, landscape guys, uh, you know, painters, drywallers, things like that. There's almost no barrier to entry in the painting trade. So if you have a rusty van and one bent extension ladder, you can now be a legitimate painter. And on paper, uh, through the government or through an ad in the paper, you have no difference than somebody like me who's you know fully committed their life to it. So setting yourself apart from all that. Number one, every other painter in my area 
has either an old beat up truck with an open back or the white van. And those are good, and I've, I've contemplated getting, you know, the white cargo van over the years, but not only do I want a vehicle that does dual duty, you know, I can, I can go uh, ice fishing or spearing in the winter with this thing, I can take my family around to stuff, it's not a bad looking vehicle, it's got a great resale, uh, they seem to last a little bit longer, the, the exteriors, but it's very important to me to set myself apart when we do the estimate. So, you know, you got the collared shirt, you got the truck. Uh, I got my vinyl lettering on, consistent image throughout, you know, logo on my thing is the same as the logo on my truck. It's very important to show up. You know, I don't stress the clean truck all the time in Minnesota. Starting about now until uh, April or May, it's kind of a disaster with road salt and and uh, snow and all that stuff. So people understand if, you, if you're a little bit dirty, but otherwise it's it seems to be okay. Um, I usually, uh, you know, the truck, you know, once a week, give or take, uh, I'll get out there and, and sponge it down and things like that, keep it clean. Uh, people always have complaints about the white vehicles. I find that white's probably the easiest to keep clean for some odd reason, so just shows less wear and tear. But yeah, the uh, the vinyl lettering is actually something that I that I came up with. Uh, very important to me. Again, you can do a very simple, boring logo, or you can do kind of a fancier logo, and really, it doesn't cost any more. Um, if you have a specific image though, you know, like uh, I, I sort of tailor myself after, uh, you know, uh, historic uh, newspaper ads, uh, the fonts, the, the images they use, and I kind of built it off that. And uh, so yeah, I, 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 sp I had a very specific image that I was going for, so I, I kind of made up all the lettering. I found the vinyl for my guy, that nice gold engine turn stuff, and I basically told him what I want. Um, I, the guy I have do my stuff is one of those old timey sign painters who used to do stuff by hand. So he's got the artistic ability to do this. This just makes it easier on him when I give him stuff like that. So again, very important. Uh, I think people take for granted consistency between, you know, logos on the shirt here, logos on the outerwear, logos on the truck, everything is consistent all the time. And it really uh, builds trust with the homeowner, puts them at ease when you show up and the face, the logo on the website matches your face, matches logos on your trucks, everything consistent. It's very easy for them to understand where you're coming from here. So. Does your entire work fleet use the same setup? Yeah, actually, you know, I try to, I try to make this single truck with as much ladders and gears I can put in it support five to six men. So. You know, like I said, the only times I deviate from that, we go grab the other Ram work truck uh, when we either split jobs or when uh, there is so much stuff. There's, you know, three levels of dormers on a house and we have to set up a whole bunch of ladders. So ladders will be in use on the top of the roof, but we still need to have crew on the lower end. Or, you know, in the case of this uh, job my guys are doing now with a steel horse barn, a block auto shop and a house, we're split between buildings and it's a ton of uh, time wasting to sort of drag all those ladders in between. So uh, we'll just have ladders set up here, ladders set up here. I'll throw in an extra batch, but but no, basically this is it. I mean, I try to keep, uh, when we do split, uh, what I do is I basically just take my hand tools, uh, split those up in half. Uh, I try to carry, you know, enough for, so everybody has sort of one of everything minus the big stuff. Uh, and when we do split up, I'm there at the start of the day to get my other crew going and then they can work for the day and then I'll take an apprentice or two with me and then we'll go to another one. So um, when I'm at that job site, I know that they have everything they need and then I can do a check too. I know everything, I have everything I need, then we split from there. When we're done splitting, we put all the stuff back together uh, and then sort of go back to one crew. My preference is always one crew. Most of the jobs we do are big enough to support that. And uh, you know, minus those odd days in winter where you got two bedrooms here, three bedrooms here, We'll split them and do that, but otherwise, you know, it's uh, it's pretty easy that way. So, okay, I will check through here, see if I missed any questions. That is about it, guys. Well, listen, you know, I I appreciate you guys tuning into this uh, to learn more about the PDCA or the Contractor College. All these videos will be archived uh, on the PDCA's website and in the Contractor College. It's a pretty cool organization. Their National Expo is coming up in San Diego at the end of February. Uh, I've been a, uh, a recent member of the PDCA. I was introduced to it by a friend. Went down to the Expo last year in New Orleans and the perspective I gained from that, I mean, I had not only a crisis of faith, but I was, uh, I was impressed. 
I was uh, I was just I was spurred into all sorts of action to uh, to kind of uh, think about my own business, think about my place in the industry. What am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? What can I improve on? What are other people doing? It's a really cool thing, and if nothing else, uh, gathering around other painters uh, and uh, is a good thing. And not only that, they're a self-selecting group. So the guys who go to the expo are, are really on their game, and uh, they like sharing stories and stuff like that. So. Uh, every week on Facebook Live through my personal page, Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration, I do a weekly segment called Ask a Painter, uh, and it's for homeowners, it's for pros, anything you like. Uh, you can send me questions during the week, you can send me questions during the feed. I answer all your painting, finishing, restoration questions live. Uh, if you send me a question and I use it on air, I send you one of my handmade mugs, as, as quite a few people have got. And I appreciate you guys watching that. I appreciate you guys tuning into this. And if you have any other questions for me, uh, just send them to me. Thanks again, and, and thanks for the opportunity, PDCA. Uh, we'll do this again sometime. Thanks.